Welcome to the Love Your Marriage Podcast, hosted by Joseph and Crystal Gruber. We are here to awaken authentic Catholic culture through holy matrimony. And that begins with our marriage, and now yours. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Direct, O Lord, our actions by thy holy inspiration, and carry them on by thy gracious assistance, that every word and work of ours may begin in thee, and by thee be happily ended. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Welcome to the Love Your Marriage Podcast. I am Joseph Gruber, host of the podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Tuning in, weird word. You don't, there's no tuning anymore. You're listening in. Thank you for listening. Today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about a concept that I have found difficult in my own marriage, which is to not treat marriage as a zero-sum game. To not treat marriage as a zero-sum game. What do I mean by that? I mean that very often this insidious little lie creeps in and it says, if you're doing well, that's probably harming your spouse. And if you want your spouse to do well, you need to be doing poorly. Super weird. Super weird idea. It's not true. It is not a good idea. You, as a, as a Catholic married person, that is not how this has to work. The, it is so opposite of how it should work that it is laughable, and yet it is so harmful, right? When, when God made man and woman, it was that they might be of mutual help to each other. When Pope Leo XIII wrote Arcanum Divine on Christian marriage back in the late 1800s, he reaffirmed this, that, that actually spouses are supposed to be helpful to one another, which doesn't mean hurtful to one so that the other one might be helped. And I think there, there are all sorts of different w- reasons why this might float in, Maybe this is how you were raised. Maybe this is examples that you've seen. Maybe uh, this this is how it worked out a couple of times, right? Like husbands, you might have said to your wife, "Hey, you go take the night off, and I'll I'll put the kids to bed," and she has a wonderful time, and you have a maybe less wonderful time putting the kids to bed, and you think, "Oh, I guess that's what this is. This is the dynamic: is that when she does well, I do worse, and then when I'm doing well." she's doing worse. So may, maybe it's from that, uh, because there are particular instances where it seems like uh, in order for one to do better, the other one has to do worse. But generally speaking, that is not a principle to apply to one's marriage. Generally speaking, the goal is for me to be able to help my wife and my wife to be able to help me. And generally speaking, for both of those things to happen roughly contemporaneously, roughly at the same time. Every once in a while, I'm going to have to bite the bullet or she's going to have to to take on a little bit of additional suffering for the sake of the other. But generally speaking, you can think win-win when it comes to marriage. You can think it's not about if I have a larger slice of pie, she must necessarily have a smaller slice. Or... In order for, for him to have a larger slice, I will take the smaller slice. That, that doesn't have to happen. Obviously, if you have a literal pie, that is what happens. That, that is the nature of pies. I'll, I, I will give you that. And hopefully you have such a marriage where you do have celebratory pies and cakes and cheesecakes and other such things. And in that case, yes. Okay, you win. That That is a situation where it's a... A, a bit of a, if you have more, I'll have less scenario. But that doesn't have to be how you plan your life. You can plan for both of you to thrive. You can ask the question, what do you need right now? And they can ask the question, what do you need right now? Same question. Each spouse asks it. And if each spouse is willing to list what they actually need, There is a chance that you can find solutions. There's a chance you can find a way forward where both of you can derive benefit. And that is the goal. That that is that is something worth working toward. Uh, I I think there is also this nature of so if I say to my wife, go out and have a fun night out, 
and I'll stay home and take care of the kids and get them to bed, and I have a miserable time. One of the reasons it's, quote, miserable is if I haven't done it enough, any activity that I am new to is going to be a rough time. And if it's a a rough time with other people, it's going to seem even worse because then I suffer and they suffer because of me. Uh, So some of this is, yes, there will be suffering in the short term, but if I make a habit of this, I can learn how to make bedtime a much more bearable kind of time with me and with the children. Or at least for me, I I think, at least depending on the age of the child, uh, bedtime can just be uh, something that they love to fight against. And that's, that's on them. That's, that is, that's on them. Anyway, so some of this is what we're thinking is I'm having a worse time so that they can have a better time is what, what is actually happening, happening is I am having a time of learning so they can have a better time. And that time of learning, if I'm leaning into the learning, if I'm leaning into the fact that this is not a one-and-done scenario, but this is me learning skills, me trying things, me working through the difficulty so that it can become a thing of ease in the future, if we have that spirit, then, yes, the first few times you say, hey, honey, go out, you know, go get together with a couple of your friends, go to that book club, I'll take care of the kids. There'll be rough times. But the goal is not for them to always be rough. That that would be a silly goal to have. It would be a silly goal to say, every time dad is home with the kids is a miserable time for him and the children. That might be the reality at the beginning. It doesn't have to be the reality perpetually. So there, there are those elements. Uh, there are also just very clearly times when there is more suffering for one party than the other. And to acknowledge that and to be a source of support and stability for the sake of the other. And to, to be the one, if, if my wife is having a particularly hard time, whether because uh, it's the beginning of the homeschooling year or because she's having a baby, uh, these are times for me I'm not having as much difficulty because of those things to be very mindful of what our goals are and, and why it is that we're choosing what we're choosing and what it is the good thing that we are working toward so that the suffering that she's enduring is not suffering without meaning and purpose, but suffering that is deeply imbued with meaning and purpose because we planned, because we thought, thought it through and thought because we thought it was worth the effort, and the sacrifice, and the suffering. So even if one spouse is not doing well, that doesn't mean that it has to be a a meaningless suffering or even a, a kind of suffering without joy. And I think this is also a little bit of a messy thing in marriage is that we have such a, a contracted idea of what happiness consists of as an American people that we think that if I'm not constantly pleased, if I'm not constantly being instantly gratified, that I'm not happy. We, we actually need a much richer, broader, uh, more comprehensive view of happiness in order to see how the, the kind of suffering that you're enduring now is not opposed to joy, but is actually the path to joy and is a path that can be imbued with joy because we know that it is a path to our goal. Anyway, hopefully all of this made sense. It's not a zero-sum game. There are times when one is up and one is down, but that's not the goal, and that is not a, a necessary piece of marriage. So if you're thinking that, hey, Joseph, the thing that you led off with, I do feel like life is like a giant pie that's not quite big enough for my spouse and I, well, there are more pies to be baked. There are more desserts to be had. And it's not, life is not a box of chocolates. Life is many, many things more than just a box of chocolates. So 
all that to say, um, there is a kind of peace that comes from knowing that our, our, our primary job on this earth is to love God and to love our neighbor. And we got to choose our permanent neighbor in our spouse. And the loving of God and the loving of our neighbor, that only costs everything. But in the giving of everything, there is all of the joy as well. We, we, we get so much more than we give when we love God and love neighbor. And for us married folk, with our perpetual neighbor, this is where true joy is. So, not a zero-sum game. It is, though, kind of a game. It is kind of a game, and it is supposed to be mostly fun and playful insofar as you are capable. All right, so that's the episode. Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, If it was, then do me a favor. Take a moment and rate and review this podcast. This is a relatively new podcast with a relatively small audience, and it turns out one of the best ways for a podcast to grow is you. You, dear listener, you stumbled across this podcast somehow, and if you're listening this far into the episode... You are the kind of person who probably has something to say for uh, a review. And you're also probably someone who knows other people who would enjoy this and would benefit from this, this podcast. We do have another podcast, Longer Form. That's where we sometimes host interviews. That's where we also develop more general ideas about Catholic life and Catholic mission. And that's called A Word from Our Outpost. This podcast, though, short, sweet, good for a quick commute especially if you're listening to me at double speed. Other things, if you are a Catholic married man, that is a Catholic husband, if you have 45 minutes, I think I can help uh, in a way that would be not just helpful, um, affirming. It, it, one of my jobs as, uh, as the head of uh, our outpost marriage ministry, I, I want to affirm husbands in the work that they're doing, and in the goals that they have, and I want to be able to help be a sounding board so that they can pursue those goals even better and to love their spouse even better because your marriage is worth loving. So that's going on. We also now have an events page on our website. I'm going to put a link to that because we have a few things coming up in the next few months that you might be interested in. And I don't know if there's anything else for this episode. So I'll close in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. This has been a production of Our Outpost, a ministry to awaken authentic Catholic culture through holy matrimony. Please like, share, subscribe, rate, and review if you found this helpful and encouraging. Find out more at ouroutpost.org.